Hi, welcome or welcome back to Sapling Tarot. My name is Imogen. So, trigger warning for this video, um, we could touch on some slightly difficult topics. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the news <laughs> and uh, the world as it stands at the moment, and I'm also going to be talking about some personal history as it pertains to particularly sexual trauma and other kind of life trauma stuff. Um, I'm not going to go into any details, but if that's not your thing, please, uh, I will not be offended if you bow out now. <laughs> Today we're going to be doing my wrap up for the Witch's Black Lent challenge, uh, which has been a six week challenge over the period of Lent, I suppose. <laughs> um, and uh, I've been working through it week to week, uh, on and off the way that I, I tend to do. And um, yeah, I thought I would I would tell you about what I've been up to. Um, before I get into what I've been up to, I really want to uh, highly recommend that you go and watch Isha, the activist witch's video about viewing all of the sins through an intersectional feminist lens. And then also I've really loved uh, Lennon's video about greed and um, Emily's video about wrath. I'm probably going to be saying wrath and wrath uh, interchangeably throughout this video because um, different people in my life say it differently and I don't know which is correct so inevitably I end up saying wrath 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 so yeah just that's your that's your heads up um, this tag was devised by Jasmine Ambrosia and uh, Beanbag Hagwag and the art for the challenge was done by Zoe and Fernie. And so, yeah, like huge shout outs to all of them for their amazing work. Their videos have obviously been incredible. I love all of their content. And uh, yeah, it was a really nice challenge to kind of be like quietly a part of. So the challenge was to spend the first week researching the sins and then think about beneficial ways that they can be used for ourselves. Um, and then it was to choose one as the main focus of the challenge. I didn't choose one. I'm a Gemini. I, you cannot make me choose things. Um, as is abundantly clear in, in many of my videos. So um, I've chosen two things because I am already kind of on a bit of a journey with um, lust. So uh, all kind of, you know, kind of area of things so uh, it was like a natural dovetail thing for my own personal stuff but then the world was on fire um, and it has been <laughs> for a long time and I think there's just increasing awareness and kind of being more and more plugged into all of the different ways in which the world is on fire that you know, definitely thinking about like the multiple genocides that are happening in the world right now, that the powers that be seem intent on letting run rampant. Um, and my community is under attack, so like queer folk around the world, things are in so many places moving backwards. Um, so I had like, Wrath was just not going to let me ignore it and I know that both of these are quite root one sins to be working with um but here we are <laughs> that's what I've been working with uh that's where we are so um like all of the sins are relevant uh but these are just the two that floated to the top of the pile for this year both sins tap into this sense that um, Emily mentioned in her video about wrath um, into being like raised to be meek and mild like I was born in a in a girl's body I've been socialized as a girl and a woman all of my life so it's this thing to be like polite above all um, and then to be meek and mild and definitely don't show rage and don't show desire and don't show any extremes of emotions at all really I think part of that is being raised as a, a girl and a woman, but also there's like a particular weird British thing about emotions. 
that I don't know if like other places have. I mean, I'm sure some other places do, but I don't know broadly if other places struggle with this. I could be entirely wrong. I only have the experience of being raised British and like specifically English. Um, and so there's like, there's a, a whole stiff upper lip <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> um, so yeah. So I'm going to start talking about um, lust and then I'm going to go on to wrath and then we're just probably going to kind of like bounce around uh, with that with the kind of the different aspects of the sort of challenge thing. Um, so reading wise I was already in February I was kind of doing like a bit of a love and connection month, um, you know, original. Um, and so I, if you want to know more about the books I was reading, there is going to be a video up next week, hopefully, about everything I've been reading recently. But particularly, um, I'm thinking about Sacred Sex by Gabriella Hurstic for the kind of more magical side of things. And then Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski, which has been a really helpful book um, for me over the last, oh, fuck knows how many years. But I've like read it and reread it. And I recently got the workbook, which is kind of an interesting take on the thing and I've had to go quite carefully slowly through it because it can it can bring up a lot of feelings so anyway I should have started this with like defining lust as defined by the concept of the deadly sins I definitely didn't give any preamble about the it's about the deadly sins I definitely should have done uh we're just we're just riffing here, apparently. So lust is defined as a disordered desire or an inordinate, so immoderate, excessive, unrestrained enjoyment of sexual pleasure. And it is the opposite of chastity. So I was thinking about what it means to have like disordered desire or inordinate, immoderate, excessive, unrestrained enjoyment. And I was thinking that like, particularly for someone raised as like a girl and a woman like any <laughs> desire or you know in my my upbringing and any and like the culture that I've grown up in any desire any enjoyment um is disordered <laughs> or immoderate or excessive or that kind of thing um but then also there's the you know there's the fun flip side of but you also don't want to be a prude <laughs> and that kind of stuff so it's that really fun walking that line and then so in my work with lust and pleasure and desire and all of those things it's been like finding a space for desire and like working out what I want amongst a history of like my primary threat response throughout my life like for loads of people has been fawn so just kind of you know give people what they want and hope that they don't hurt you kind of thing um so yeah, so it's been about like finding a place for desire and pleasure amongst this history of born threat response and uh, just wanting to, you know, the, the, the nicer I am, the more palatable I am, the least kind of demanding or um, fussy or sensitive I am, then like the easier things are going to be and the less harm is going to come to me kind of, thing. you know, it's not a a foolproof system <laughs> you know but that's not really what the body is doing when it's having a threat response it's like a knee-jerk thing and my knee-jerk thing for most of my life was uh yeah fawn <laughs> it's not sexy it's not fun I'm not proud of it but it is what it is um so I recently watched Poor Things the film I've even mentioned this like in the last video <laughs> that went up um it's had a bit of an impact not in the least for the costuming, which was just absolutely mwah, chef's kiss amazing. So yeah, it felt like um, basically like a documentary <laughs> of life as uh, an undiagnosed, particularly, but I think even diagnosed autistic girls and women, uh, there may be a lot of laugh out loud moments in that film where it's like, oh, fuck me, I'm on the screen. That is... Um, yeah, but like, so particularly a young and traumatised, um, undiagnosed autistic, it's, um, it was quite a, quite a ride, and watching the protagonist 
kind of unbridled, unrestrained, that's that, that's that word, kind of desire for physical touch and uh, sexual pleasure and having no real shame around it, despite people really trying to make her feel shame about it. And then how people take advantage of that and how her life goes because of people taking advantage of that but then that's still not permeating and like causing her shame (laughs) the dream um and so yeah that was like a big that was an accidental thing I didn't know that that was going to be uh, relevant to this challenge but um I think that's a really interesting like narrative piece and I really want to read the book um and see how it goes I know that lots of people have had issues with it. A lot of people think it's really graphic. A lot of people think that it's like weird because she's like, oh, what's the, was it born beautiful yesterday or born sexy yesterday trope? And people find that really problematic. I see it maybe as more of like a Lolita thing where you can talk about something without condoning it. So I don't think at any point that film is made uh, suggesting that it's a good thing that these things happen. I think it is just like these things do happen. And I think particularly if you have any relevant like lived experience of it, to pretend that these things don't happen doesn't really serve anyone. And so yeah, so that's been kind of where I've been at on the lust thing. And then Wrath, Ross Wrath, uh, Wrath Ross, uh, a strong feeling of hatred or resentment. And then like the pivotal bit of this, I think, is that with a desire for vengeance, it's like punishment and retribution and it's the opposite of patience managing the idea of wrath alongside my like political and philosophical beliefs around like anti-carceral harm reduction is like it's a really interesting thing because it's that the idea about vengeance and punishment and retribution but i think the most important part of it for me is that these are my beliefs about myself Um, and like what I believe and how I want to move through the world in no way (laughs) am I ever gonna judge particularly like marginalized people for wanting to or marginalized and like oppressed people to fight the fuck back like no I'm not (laughs) I'm not here to be love and light peace and love above all else what's the bullshit love and above stuff no none of that I think fighting for liberation and fighting fucking tooth and nail is incredibly brave. In my own life, I've had to be a bit more of the let go and let's make sure this kind of thing doesn't happen again kind of thing, rather than actually seeking vengeance or retribution or revenge. But yeah, I cannot emphasise this enough. I'm not here saying that people shouldn't do that. (laughs) particularly people all around the world struggling for liberation for not just themselves but for their communities and for uh, everyone sometimes violence is the answer like I've I've had to learn that and um, I really believe that it's like it's been an interesting exercise in juggling particularly like I've, I've mentioned in both Isha's and Emily's videos it's juggling the way I was raised to be meek and mild and mild tempered and all of these things uh, with my understanding that peaceful love and light stuff really only goes so far. So that's a long tangent. Um, but yes, yeah, like I didn't really have any healthy role models for anger. Um, growing up, outward expressions of anger were often like really bitter and toxic and harmful. It's like all rupture, no repair. Um, with generally like very little accountability or apology and so it's like something that I still struggle with in terms of like if I let out anger or frustration I'll be like abandoned (laughs) and I want to film a video about rejection sensitivity soon because that's like a it's a big part of my neurodivergent experience and I think it is for a lot of other people as well and I want to talk about like how that relates to tarot (laughs) I mean, I want to I want to talk about it broadly, but I also want to talk about how it relates to tarot. What I hate is that often, if I'm annoyed about something, I get passive aggressive, and that's just not that's not helpful. <laughs> um, but I'm also learning that emotions don't have to be helpful. So yeah, working on it. That's been what I've been working my way through this last six weeks of the the lust and the the wrath, 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 wrath. Um, so the challenge after all that so that's my my research and like the stuff that i've been thinking 
on um it asked me to create a poem and i say no i'm not there yet in terms of um being in a place where i can spill my guts in that kind of way um even to myself so this isn't me saying oh i wrote a beautiful and like intimate poem but i'm not going to share it with you this is i cannot i'm not in a place <laughs> uh where i can do that where i can like dedicate some time to really like feeling into those feelings because um yeah i'm just not in a position where i can let that bleed out into my life right now i can do research and i can keep it cognitive and i can do like a little bit of dibble dabble um in a work with tarot and like i was saying about the emily nagoski workbook thing and the sacred text stuff i can do a little bit of that i'm not in a position where <laughs> I can write a fucking poem. Uh, so draw or create from clay an effigy for your sin. So this was going to be uh, really colourful, but then it, um, I really love it like this. So this was just like a base coat, but I really like the kind of lime wash look. So I kind of want to make another one to colour because I like it, how it looks. Um, you know, if I kind of break down the symbolism of, of stuff, it's just going to sound really wank. But um, I've got like a little sprig of the rosemary from my garden uh, in this tiny little vase. Uh, so like, you know, for protection and shit. And then this was like a kind of snaky figure or it was, <laughs> was going to be when I painted it. And then this was going to be like a little picture frame for a, um, like a painting or a sigil um, for kind of an entity that's been helping me through this um but i've been quite resistant to making that tangible and also to do that before i film this video because i don't know if i want to put that online yeah okay this is my little uh, mini altar thing i mean i can hang it up somewhere i know this isn't really like an effigy uh, but this is like more useful to me um, and then you know I can I can draw a little something something and put it in there. Then also okay, excuse the really sticky jar. I need to buy some of that like Goo Gone stuff. This is my Lust Wrath <laughs> oil. Uh, it looks disgusting in the jar, um, but it's really lovely. So this is like a the fourth week was to create an intense blend or a fragrance oil that is inspired by your selected sin, uh, and so this is both. This is like a warming, spicy rose. Um, so it's sweet almond oil with rose, cinnamon bark, black pepper, Aleppo pepper, nutmeg. Uh, it was made on the Pisces new moon, and it's been it's been cooking for like I don't know three weeks, nearly a month. Um, the rose is you know it may sound <laughs> very root one. <laughs> uh, she made a thing about you know lust and sensuality and pleasure and put rose in it how original and you know florals for spring etc um but like the nervine and nourishing qualities of rose that help relax and soothe the body are genuinely really useful for um getting yourself in a position where you can be open to the ideas of you know like desire and pleasure and all that kind of stuff so like there is a reason that roses are associated with these things and like they're good reasons um and then all of the other things are like warming hot things because to me lust and wrath are both hot feelings this is where the autism comes in because i have struggled quite a lot with um alexithymia so like not being able to name the emotions that you're feeling um and so a lot of my stuff kind of comes down to almost like elementals um, you know, the ways that tarot helps uh, an autistic brain process more than just tarot, but, you know, all sorts of stuff like that's really helped me with that. And, you know, I'll probably make a video about that at some point. But um, so, yeah, they're both really hot feelings, like physically flame, fire, hot things. Well, that's how they feel in my body anyway. So, yeah, the, the idea of having like a spicy warming oil, but, you know, be, be skin safe and you know you use loads of carrier oil and stuff like this is the neat one and it's like unstrained and all of that kind of stuff so i wouldn't be wouldn't be rubbing this onto my skin but yeah so that is the 
that's the the remnants of the the kind of I don't know stewing oil and then I also made a really ugly burgundy candle um out of uh, old scraps of like red and black wax um so and that has some of this oil in it too so that was my that's my crafting side of it and then the fifth week was the using everything you crafted to create a spell or a ritual and I did a cacao meditation for like heart opening and stuff and it was inspired by the ritual facilitated by Juliet Diaz I will tag her stuff below and I'll see if I can find the person who did the cacao ritual the first time around um that thing was uh kind of life-changing for me and it's something that I come back to a lot it like recently came up in a therapy <laughs> session um of trying to think about places where I felt safe and um I'm not a huge meditation person you may well have heard me like mention that in other videos I know that lots of people think that it's like really integral to witchcraft and stuff um I come from a slightly more like trauma-informed perspective which is that I know that for a lot of people sitting with your thoughts can actually be where it can feel really dangerous um so I'm much more of like an active meditation like walking meditation or um doing an activity mindfully so kind of mindfulness rather than meditation and like really thinking about what you're doing rather than just letting the thoughts come when that could feel like a dangerous risky thing particularly working with this kind of stuff so I also wanted to show you the decks which is what I meant to do through all of this video but I've been too busy talking and not showing you things um so the last deck is the <laughs> perhaps really obviously the goddess of love tarot which I have trimmed and I've kind of trimmed it badly because the cardstock is uh really not built for that but this is the goddess of love tarot this is by Gabriella Hurstbick of the sacred sex book and this has been yeah <laughs> such a good card um this has been really helpful for, for working through that kind of stuff for thinking about my own ideas around love and sex and pleasure and desire and all of these sorts of things um and I mean it's a really beautiful deck I love a collage deck I think the colors that she's chosen are really fabulous um well, it, I suppose it's not her that chose it, it's uh, Snakes for Hair that did the art, I think. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, so this is the, the deck I've been using for Lust and Wrath and like Rage and stuff. Um, and then also, this is kind of like my inner team deck. The, oh, we're upside down. Um, this is the Outgrow Yourself Tarot and Oracle. Um, by Acta Sparman and uh, this is yeah it's very much my inner teen deck this feels very like bodily stuff it's a bit angry it's a bit messy um and yeah this is this is really great for wrath <laughs> work um in terms of kind of like finding it and using it as fuel to do better and be better and but also you know allowing yourself grace to work through these things and yeah so these are also my uh rage decks um uh the other rage deck i have is um this is like two thirds of my inner teen <laughs> uh trio and um i this is the magical guidance cards by uh anna the astral lady tarot and they it's the it's the, like the lilith energy <laughs> um that to me like there's a there's a serenity in these cards absolutely like there's there's everything in these cards but there's something in here that it's it really speaks to that in a teen and kind of cultivating that sort of like sacred rage <laughs> um which i think in terms of how wrath can be beneficial and stuff i think it's it's that kind of the sacred rage side of stuff that is where it really comes into its own um and this deck is is just amazing for that 
so yeah that's my my raid checks my rasp so the cacao meditation to go back to that because I, I just got distracted with the the tarot because of course i did um was amazing it uh yeah i don't know if i want to like really get into it because i felt really privileged to be a part of something like a cacao ritual um given that that's like not my not my culture um and so to be able to integrate bits of that into my own personal practice and to be able to use it in that kind of heart opening way for this challenge um i just it felt like a massive privilege to be able to do that um and yeah this this challenge has been really helpful it's kind of given me a bit of scaffolding for this work that i was doing already and i think particularly the wrath stuff has been great in terms of the how to channel these feelings into a way that is like i hate saying productive but you know like useful for liberation and, and whatnot so yeah it's been really important to work through these things at the moment and coming up i think within the next month is the witches for palestine project and i'll probably talk to you a bit more about using that rage for good and channeling it out of your body and into actions for the greater good and getting away from the personal and more into the collective um, and some of the work that I've been doing through this challenge has been integral into me being able to verbalize uh, those kinds of feelings so that maybe I can actually be of some use to this project <laughs> um, I will put the links to that project down below there's going to be a raffle there's going to be an amazing video Q&A with some Palestinian people from Cardiff and that is also being organised by Isha, the activist witch, who I mentioned at the beginning. And I know that there are other creators like, uh, I think, Emily and uh, Kellyanne Maddox and all sorts of other lovely, amazing people who have contributed stuff to the raffle and are going to be making content around it. And so, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, if you've enjoyed the Witch's Black Lent stuff, I, I invite you to carry on uh, sinning for the greater good um, by going against the grain and uh, following this project. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Did you do any of the Witches Black Lent stuff? Um, who of your other favourite creators have made content about it because I would love to watch it? Um, let me know if you didn't do it, what you would do if you did do the challenge in the future. Yeah, tell me what you think, please. Thanks. If you want, I'm not your mum. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're taking really good care of yourself. Um, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.